I ask you to draw two things that look like picture frames like this and we're going to complete these in just a few minutes but what I want to talk about is are some fundamental ideas of genetics I'm going to talk about and so before I before I start filling that out I want to just talk about a little bit of back history and backstory for just a minute. Probably should have done this before I started drawing. But. In the 1800s there was a gentleman by the name of Gregor Mendel and some people say he was a monk in a monastery, some people say he was a teacher in a Catholic school, but he was a very innovative, innovative scientist really. And what he did is he had pea plants that he grew. And I think there, were, there was one side of the monastery and another side of the monastery, and there were different places to grow these peas. And he took a little paintbrush, and he would take the pollen from one color of flower and go around to the other courtyard and use that to fertilize the stigma, the female part of another flower and then he would collect the seeds and plant them and see what happened in, in the colors of the, of the flowers that resulted. And so over a period of time he developed quite a lot of scientific information. And what's so interesting about it is his findings, which I'm gonna, I'll talk about here in just a few minutes, his findings got shelved. They got shelved until about the early 1900s sometime and someone went and picked his, public, his publication off the shelf. Somebody was about ready to bust out the whole theory of genetics and they found his writings and they realized that in the late, probably the 1850s, 60s, that time that he had already developed, he already had this down and so it after he died, he became the father of modern genetics, Gregor Mendel. Interesting story. And one of the other things that I've, I've also understood as I've read through Origin of the Species by Charles Darwin is that he, he tried hard to understand genetics as he could see it. He did a lot, of, Charles Darwin did a lot of breeding and stuff himself, especially with pigeons. But but you don't hear about that much, by the way. That's interesting. But Charles was deficient on these concepts that Gregor Mendel was developing at the same time he was alive. They were just two people that had no connection, and, and it's a wonderful thing now. We've got the Internet, and one person can publish something, and somebody across the world could understand it in a, a few minutes if they Googled it. Interesting, different change of times, how it affects <coughs> How it affects things. I wanted you to draw a couple of what I call picture frames and I wanted to use these picture frames to just lay down some basic genetic concepts and of course we know the genes are carried in the DNA we know that and I want to outline some of Gregor Mendel's experiments and so he experimented with with purple pea plant flowers, purple flowers, and he experimented with uh, white ones. And so that's kind of what I'm going to talk about in, the, in these few minutes. So let's say that we had, that mama had a purple flower and dad had a white flower. Let's say that. When we put a Punnett square into use, we find out that the capital always goes first, the lowercase second. But we would find out in all these cases that we get a big P, little p, all, all of these. We get an uppercase and a lowercase letter. And so what happens is that this one is dominant. If there is one, it's called an allele, of P for purple, then all of the offspring are going to be purple. So in this case, if this was the female and this was the male, what color are all the baby flowers going to be? 
What are they all going to be? They all have a big P, so they're all going to be what? Purple. They're all going to be purple. Okay. So that would be the, the if these if these are in the parental generation, then these offspring are in the first filial generation. Okay, so now here's the interesting thing. This is where it gets kind of intriguing. Science intrigue. If we took these seeds and grew the plants, and then these were bred, look what happens next. Here's where the surprise happens. Interesting. So let's say mom is heterozygous at this point. She has two different alleles for the same trait of color, and so does the dad. So look what happens. In this first box, we get big P, big P. What do we get in this second box right here? Big P, little p. We get that. And then what about the third one? Big P, little p. And then in the, the, this last one? Little p, little p. Okay, now watch what happens here. This one looks just like the grandparent, does it not? These two look just like their parents. And what about this one right here? It's white. It's white, and it looks like one of its grandparents. So one of the, the quick things that we can see is sometimes there can be traits, in this case color, that would skip an entire generation. One generation would not even see that, but then it pops back up in the, in the grandchildren. And so that might be kind of an interesting thing about you. you. There may be some things about you, some things the way you act, the, same, the way you look, that could be reminiscent of your grandparent. And you may or may not have ever known your grandparent, but you might act like them. And you might have traits like them. It's kind of interesting how genetics skip generations. So, there are a few vocabulary words that I want you to get before we end this little discussion. These different possibilities, in this case flower color, these are called alleles. These are called alleles. And when we have when we have two of the same kind, like this and this, we call them homozygous. When we have two of the same, we say homozygous. Homo means the same. Zygous refers to the egg. But we say this one, because it has the dominant allele, we call it homozygous dominant. What about this one? This has two recessive alleles, so we say homozygous what? We say homozygous recessive. And then the combinations where we have what's called a hybrid, where we have one of, a, of both, is called heterozygous. dominant, and that is called a hybrid, hybrid situation. To bring this into Mendel's world, he did not have a Punnett square originated by Reginald Punnett at the time but I'm going to show you what he did have and how he made his thinking and his publications. Out of four possibilities here, how many of these possibilities are going to be purple? 75%. Three out of four, right? There's three of them. And how many are going to be white? One. So what he found is that there is a three to one phenotypic ratio. <clears throat> the phenotype is the outward appearance of a, an organism. Now, watch this for just a second. How many of these big P, big P's do we have? How many? 
How many of these in this square? One. There's one. How many of these heterozygotes do we have? Two. And then how many of this homozygous recessive? One. This is called the genotypic ratio. And so the, the, the interesting finding, this is going to be here to kind of conclude this brief introduction. His findings were like this. This is what he, he kept finding. He, he researched pea color, yellow or green. He researched whether the pea inside was smooth or wrinkled. He researched the color of the flowers. He researched was the plant tall or short. He researched did the flowers only flower on the tip of the plant or along the side of it? And guess what he kept coming up with? He kept coming up with stuff like this. He kept coming up with, with ratios that roughly evened out to three to one. That was his research. And at the time, the Punnett square was not around to kind of make it pretty and easy to understand. But the reason that his research is important is that it is called the particulate theory of research. It's the idea that your genetics are passed on through certain characteristic traits, particles, and it's not some kind of magical blending that happens in nature that nobody quite understands. It also explains how that you could have one trait, in this case a white flower, that could completely disappear and then reappear in another generation.